So guys, first order of the day is for me to change that adder shower faucet. I'm gonna take that faucet off along with the riser, put a new one in, then we're gonna go down to the first floor and we're gonna put a troop waste assembly on the bathtub in the first floor apartment. It's all open down the basement, so it's gonna be a relatively uh, painless job, but uh, stick with me, I'll be right back after the intro. All right, guys, so for the first part of this job, we're in the third floor bathroom. The tenant was having an issue getting water from the shower. So when they pulled up the diverter that is located on that bath faucet down below, you'll see that in a second, probably 75% of the water was coming out the nozzle. It wasn't going up to the shower head. So the tenant was complaining to the landlord, I can't take a shower. What can we do about it? And really the only thing you can do about it is is replace the unit. Now these things were quick solutions to uh, uh, to add a shower to a tub on legs. They're not really uh, precision made uh, pieces of equipment. Most of them are imported and I advise the homeowner of that. And you can see here, it's got a pull up diverter and it's plastic and the hot and cold water uh, uh, handles there uh, consist of faucet stems and traditional washers. Uh, I was able to find a model that had ceramic cartridges, both left and right, and also a ceramic diverter. So I don't know how I stumbled upon it, but uh, once I did, I, I, I just bought it and told the homeowner, I think I got a solution. As you can see here, they're a pain in the neck. Uh, there's not much room from behind to get tools in there. And here's a shot from above. You see my channel lock there. In addition to my channel lock, I have my six inch offset uh, rigid pipe wrench, which did most of the work. Anyway, uh, it's a tedious job. Uh, I, I really almost was gonna remove the overflow to try to aid in me getting at the hot water side, but I couldn't get the screw to that, out of that overflow plate. So I uh, hacked at it and eventually got everything off with, uh, you know, my channel lock pliers. But I will say it was a bitch. Uh, and here's the old unit once I got it out. And, you know, you can see what it looks like from behind. Generally, I packed them with putty because uh, they're hollow bodied. And I, I just packed them so that when I install them, the uh, putty can, can squeeze out. So now it's time to prep the new one. And as you'll see here, uh, in addition to my uh, bulletproof uh, ceiling compound blue block, and uh, by the way, uh, the blue block I placed inside, uh, you'll see the uh, hot and cold water connections inside there. Now that little bit of blue you see on the putty, that's actually mega lock, that's not blue block. But in addition to putting it inside uh, where I... Uh, connect the water lines I also put it uh, on the on the uh, the uh, male ends of the gooseneck connections and you can see that here so that when I do uh, run those lock nuts up and then the nuts for the goosenecks uh, and I whack it up really really tight it, it really does the job and then once I get it in naturally the putty squeezes out and uh, you know, as I always do, I'll I'll take the excess off, and you can see the uh, the diverter there. I didn't put the handle on as of yet, uh, and actually, I put a new riser pipe in uh, a straight section of riser pipe. I didn't go all the way up to the gooseneck because I didn't really didn't want to dismantle the shower uh, the shower curtain rod. And after I got it in, uh, naturally, I got it all running and you'll see here that's a slick diverter man I mean you just flick that and the water comes up to the shower and as you can see and it was a hundred percent shut off on bottom and it just came out of the top beautifully really really nice job very happy with it like I said I added a straight section down at the bottom and put an extra bracket to the wall there was a bracket up top but I added the one on the bottom and everything was looking good and yeah, that job turned out relatively uh, well. All right, guys, that was a bitch. That hot water side was tough to get tightened, tough to take off. But I got it done. Everything's looking good. So now I'm going to take a little lunch. Then we're going to drop down to the first floor. And from the basement, I am going to change a trip waste and overflow assembly. So uh, 
I will see you after I eat my lunch. Hopefully it's a little cooler down there too. See you in a minute. So here we are on the first floor, had my lunch, and now we're going to attempt to change this trip liver waste. Now, I was here weeks ago. They had a stopped up bathtub. They couldn't get it cleaned, and so I ended up, uh, and by the way, before I go any further, that was just a plate. There was no linkage in there, so they weren't able to stop the water up. I drilled a hole in there so I can get my snake down the drain line, and uh, I got a big wad of hair out of there big squirrel tail out, if you will. But they decided they wanted to make it functional so they could fill the tub. And so this is what it looks like from the top. But let's take a look down in Plumber's Paradise in the basement. This house is an absolute wreck, as you can see. It was leaking in several places. It was leaking from that tailpiece going up. And you can see they had some inch and a half copper drain line. Uh, going to, believe it or not, a saddle that was clamped around a four-inch stack. So this whole this whole basement is uh, one big code violation. But here you can see where it goes up. So it was leaking from the bottom of the T. It was leaking where uh, it screws into the shoe going through the tub there. It was just uh, one big pain in the neck. And now the, uh, uh, the job was to get this dismantled and get it prepped uh, for the new... Uh, for installation of the new um, unit. So naturally, I always try to take the strainer out. And uh, in most cases, these tubs have been in there 50, 60, 70 years. So I actually broke the crossbar with my strainer removal tool. And this wasn't coming out. And so I proceeded to cut the strainer. This is something you don't do for the faint of heart, especially if you don't know what you're doing, and especially on a steel tub. This was a steel tub. This was not a cast iron tub. Usually I can hit that and I can knock it in enough so it'll screw out. This one uh, was not easy. Uh, worked up a little sweat here, uh, and I actually had to go in again, and then it ended up making another cut and actually cut away a third of that strainer before I was able to. Uh, to knock it uh, with my hammer and chisel to get it to where it would come out. And you'll take a look at that here and you can see what that looks like. So uh, this is something I don't suggest the DIY people do out there. Um, you know, I have all the strainer removal tools. None of them worked. Uh, you know, on a cast iron tub, I'm not as worried. And as you can see here, this is a thin steel tub. And uh, I actually cleaned it up. You'll get, a, you'll get a better feeling for what that looked like after I cleaned it up. And by the way, uh, there's the top where the overflow is going to go in. And uh, yeah, you got to be super careful. And you can see this tub is like really, it's pitted. It's, it's an old, old tub. But it is what it is. You can see it here. It's all pitted up. And you'll see uh, where I removed the strainer, I cleaned it up. But you can see I, I made a, a couple of nicks with the sawzall, but nothing detrimental. I didn't go beyond the, the limits. Uh, anyway, now it's time to prep the new strainer with putty, mega lock, and get that in there. And there you go. You can see that. And you're probably wondering how he got the strainer in without holding the shoe downstairs, but I'll show you that in a minute. I mounted the overflow here. If you can find a, uh, a waste and overflow with a lock plate like you're looking at here, that lock plate pulls that overflow up against the tub. If it ever has to be cleaned out with a snake for any reason, you don't have to worry about that overflow popping off. Again, for those of you wondering how I pull this off by myself, because I don't work with anybody, Let's go downstairs and uh, ingenuity. So when you're working by yourself, you have to figure out ways to get things done. And uh, I had my nifty, uh, my nifty, uh, I don't know what you want to call this tool here, but I actually uh, got this, the shoe and put a fiber washer followed by a rubber washer, whacked it up against the bottom of the tub while I went upstairs and, and, and screwed the strainer in. And I didn't screw it in a uh, hundred percent tightly because I, I needed it to move so I can maneuver the overflow and the T onto the shoe from downstairs and shove it up in place, which is what I did. So it was a little, uh, you know, monkeying around with it, if you will. And then once I did that, once I got the overflow in place upstairs with the lock plate, then I went and with my strainer tool, I whacked the strainer in. 
and tightened everything up. And now it's just a matter of uh, tying everything else. Uh, but this 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 whole basement is one big mess, uh, and you could probably see that from what you're looking at here. But so now my next order of opera, and there's that uh, waistline, is an inch and a half copper waistline. I threw another bracket up because they were using bandine. This place was riddled with bandine, and now it was time to get the PVC trap on, and I ran a solid piece of PVC right up to the bottom of that T. And that coupling you're looking at is what they call a CP44. So it goes from inch and a half steel or iron to like inch and a half copper. And uh, I was able to squeeze that onto the bottom of the T. And I used the same thing on the other end where it converted from PVC to inch and a half copper. So it's basically a reducing type of uh, no hub coupling. And uh, that worked out well. Uh, again, uh, you know, after I got this all tied in, I went upstairs, I ran the water and, uh, you know, filled the tub up and stayed downstairs and made sure everything was leak proof. And uh, it turned out good. You know, it was a long day between the faucet upstairs. Upstairs took me about two hours. I'd say down here was about a, a three hour ordeal. And then by the time I cleaned up and did all the paperwork, I probably got about six hours vested in this job. And, uh, yeah, like I said, after I was done, uh, I ran the water upstairs and uh, no leaks, uh, took the customer, showed him everything, uh, went over the operation of the air to shower upstairs, uh, went over the operation of the trip waste here, uh, and he was just uh, really, really happy about the whole thing. And yeah, just a, another day in my life, guys. So there you go. It was an added shower install and a bathtub trip waste and overflow. Uh, that hot water side up on the top floor gave me a lot of trouble, uh, but I I worked at it till I got the water to stop leaking. And uh, my salvation was that blue block. Good stuff. Just don't get it on your hands. And the trip waste downstairs worked out good. Steel tub, you have to use special caution when working on a steel tub because it doesn't take much to uh, chip the porcelain off. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. For those of you who are new here, you might want to consider subscribing. You might want to like the video. And like I said, I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Uh, stay well. And as I always like to say, guys, happy plumbing.